pros and cons of the Dremel Idea Builder Model 3D20. This video is part two of a three-part series. The first part came out about a year ago, and the final part will be an analysis and review of the Dremel Idea Builder, hopefully sooner than a year from now. Okay, so I have some footage of me that I took while I was trying to compile the pros and cons, and I shrank down uh, with this shrink machine here that you can see, uh, which it broke, and so I'm not sure if I'll be able to shrink down again by shrinking down, I was able to get a better look at the 3D printer overall for the pros and cons. So let's do this. Pros. Cons. Pro! Setup was simple and easy. Check out my first video for more info. I in the corner of the screen or in the description is where you can find that video. Pro! It comes with everything you need to start printing and you can print once it's set up right out of the box. Pro, it has a color touchscreen. None of that bologna sandwich twisty knob stuff here. Con, it responds slowly when you click on a thing, and after it responds slowly, it loads kind of like funkyishly, if that's a word, I don't know. Like half the screen refreshes, then the second half does after that. It's not a hindrance, but I feel that the hardware behind the touchscreen is probably low quality. And I'll go ahead and email Dremel and ask them if there's a way to install like a graphics card in it, and then I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Pro, it's enclosed. So if you have a cat or like a child or something, they're less likely to get themselves burnt or mess up a print. Con, it's kind of noisy. Like if you leave this thing in your living room, there's no way to hide it noise-wise. The fans, the cooling fans, they're just kind of noisy. Pro. It uses a normal computer cord for electricity, so if you lose the cord, it's easy to replace. Yeah, it's, it's a pro. Con! If you lose power, it will not pick up where it left off in a print, so you have to just start fresh. Uh, so I use an uninterruptible power supply, or a UPS, to be sure that I don't lose out on, like, building, because if you're three hours in and then all of a sudden you lose power, it's like, you got to start over. Biggest pro is resolution. This thing can print down to 0.1 millimeter thickness per layer. And that's actually really impressive to me. And I've built some stuff and it looks really good. Con, it's slow when it prints on high resolution. And I don't know, I think that's normal for most 3D printers. Pro-ish con. Dremel supplies several different colors of PLA filament so you can buy it fairly easily from them. And I think still Home Depot, I don't know if they still carry it though. Hmm. Con! Con, 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 con. The biggest con is that the filament that it accepts is, is Dremel only. It, oh. So I called a bologna sandwich on that a while back and I came up with a hack so that larger reels would fit in it just the same as the Dremel ones do. None of that hanging outside the machine's burrito salsa. Specifically, Hatchbox reels of PLA filament. I've recently been told that Hatchbox has changed their reels so that it might not be effective any longer. But Amazon appears to still sell the reels that I designed off of, so yeah. Click in the eye in the corner of the screen or check out the description below for a link to the video that I made of how to install the filament hack that I designed. Pro! The top is removable, so if you want to look at your print from above, you can easily do that. Con! It's sometimes, if you leave the printer unattended, it begins to like misprint. And it's, uh, yeah, so sometimes it just doesn't print so well. Once again, many 3D printers have this issue and or this, this is normal. A lot of people have this issue. I have found that I almost never have that issue when the print is set to the highest resolution setting. Pro, it comes with the software to convert the files to a Dremel file. Many people on forums have said that this is a bad thing, however, I'm new to the 3D printer game, sort of. I've gone to a 3D printer club and watched them spend a whole lot of time on like temperatures and speeds and stuff, and, and it was just a waste to sit there and watch, watch them trying to figure out what essentially should be preset. With this printer, it just seems to be preset to, to work, just to blah, it works. Unknown if this is a pro or a con, unheated bed. I don't think it's a pro, obviously, because it's a feature that it could use, but I'm also not sure it's necessarily a con. I've noticed that if I take a second or third try on a print to finally get it to stick, that the bed is slightly warmer than when it was when I initially started the print. And I'm talking very early stages, like first three layers. 
This is almost always unnecessary when the print is set on the highest resolution. So I would not call a non-heated bed a con. I don't know, maybe that's for you to decide. Pro! The built platform tape that it comes with seems to last a while. I've had it on for over a year and printed a fair amount of stuff and have yet to change it. Pro! You could remove the platform easily, like entirely, so that you can begin the difficult time to remove your printed thing. Pro! Leveling the build platform is easy and I've only had to do it one other time outside of setting it up and it's really simple. Con. It's difficult to remove prints. I use a razor blade to get around the edges of the prints to get it to like release or to get a release started. But man, the spatula thing they give you is like using that is like handing a hot dog to a samurai and saying, go slice that watermelon in half. The attempt will fail. It's not good. It's not good. Pro. The printer has a light built in so that you can see the print while it's 3D printing. Con. The placement of the light is such that it doesn't show the print well in the initial beginning of the print. So you gotta like squeeze it and you're gonna be like, eh, is that, I don't know if that's printing. That's print right, you gotta get a flashlight and go, just light it up. Pro, it's got rubber feet <laughs> and it stays on the top of a table pretty good, yeah. It's hard to slide around when it's on its feet too. Yeah, it's good, it's just pro. Con, the printer is PLA only. I call this a con because, well, I don't, I really don't know why though. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter a whole lot, but to some people online, many people online, they like the ability to use several different types of filament. Uh, you know what though? I don't know if that's a con. Hmm. Bro, contrary to formular belief, you can actually adjust settings that seem to be preset. So when you send the print to the final build file, and the Dremel software, you can choose thickness and like head speed and even the temperature. I have yet to change the temperature because uh, it simply has been working for me. Preset to 220 degrees Celsius. Pro, the extruder tip can take a beating. Uh, I've messed up on some prints and just like saturated the entire print head <laughs> with this mucky PLA nastiness. I just pulled it off. And like while this it was still hot, yeah, I'd pull it off and then I'd scrape at it with the little pick that they gave me and then just kept using it. Since I came out with my first video, it looks like Dremel has come out with a new model that seems even harder to upgrade the filament. <laughs> if I get my hands on one though, we'll see what happens. Next video for the Dremel Idea Builder 3D20 is the analysis and review. I'll link it here in the eye in the corner or the description or somewhere, or wherever it fits, I'll link it uh, when it comes out. Here are some related videos that are linked in the description below for more on the Dremel Idea Builder 3D20. This guy Joel, the 3D printing nerd, when he came out with his video about the Dremel 3D printer, uh, my views, which were rising fairly rapidly, just tanked when he released his video. And for good reason, it's pretty good. Check it out if you haven't already. And you know, maybe go check out mine too, that first one I made. Yeah, okay. If I missed something, leave a comment below, please. If you like this video, there's a button for that, the like button. Hit it. If you want to see more videos like it, there's a button for that. Subscribe. And if you're just bored, cruise my channel. You might learn some stuff or laugh or something. I hope that helps. See you later, internet. Huh. Okay, that was remarkably simple.